For Cyberpunk 2077 and the character of Johnny Silverhand, CD Projekt Red wanted to bring their star actor, Keanu Reeves, to life in-game, using his skills and on-screen demeanor for the character. So to do this, they had to get every last detail of Reeves by scanning his entire body and having him perform the motion capture work. Reeves was no stranger to motion capture, having used similar technology for The Matrix, so he stepped into the skin-tight suit and acted out the role, providing his complete range of mannerisms, bringing a visual archive of gestures and expressions, and all in all, giving the animators the toolbox they needed to work with. Reeves saw the character as one with a lot of energy and an interpretation of a person who is inside everyone, so he added his own little nuances to the different sections of Johnny, such as the rock star and the former soldier. Providing the motion capture for Johnny was one of the earliest stages of development for the game, and the world and character of Johnny Silverhand were built around Reeves' performance in motion capture. But of course, CD Projekt Red are by no means the only ones to use motion capture when designing their game, and as video games have become more and more realistic, motion capture has become ever more prevalent. Whether it be used to emulate a real-life person or superstar, uh, to make realistic fight scenes or combat, to show expressive performances in iconic characters, or even to make the movement of an animal look real, motion capture is often behind it. In this video, we will take a look behind the scenes of a number of different video games and just how motion capture brought them to life. By now, you are probably very much aware of what motion capture is, the process of tracking and recording the intricacies, nuances, and subtleties of live movement and capturing that information. The recording will track the movement of a person, object, or animal and relay it accurately in a digitized copy. Motion capture is used in a number of different areas of society, such as the military, in the medical field, in sports, robotics, and of course, video games and movies, with motion capture most notably being used in the likes of Lord of the Rings, War for the Planet of the Apes, Star Wars The Phantom Menace, and Avengers Infinity War. Motion capture for video games and filmmaking is most often accomplished by recording human actors and using that information to animate digital character models in 2D or 3D computer animation. With intricacies such as hand movement, facial expressions, and subtle body language being referred to as performance capture. But just because motion capture is becoming more ingrained in society, and in particular the entertainment industry, doesn't mean it's a new practice by any means, and it actually dates back a lot further than you might expect. In 1915, Polish-American animator Max Fleischer, who brought animated characters such as Coco the Clown, Popeye, and Betty Boop to the screen, developed the technique of rotoscoping. Rotoscoping, in essence, was the art of recording live-action footage and having the animators work and sketch over the film frame by frame to create realistic action. Eventually, this attracted the attention of Walt Disney, who used the process on the first feature-length animated film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. The art of rotoscoping was so successful for Disney that they used the process again and again in a number of their movies, even recycling the old live-action footage used for Snow White in a number of other feature-length movies. The 2000 movie Sinbad Beyond the Veil of Mists was one of the first movies to use motion capture exclusively for their animation. But of course, it was Andy Serkis' performance as Gollum in Lord of the Rings The Two Towers that really pushed the process further ahead, with Serkis being knitted out of a scene in a motion capture suit while special cameras recorded his physical performance, such as facial gestures, twitches, and scowls. What was so revolutionary about this was that Serkis could actually interact with his fellow actors in a scene as opposed to having to act on his own in a studio elsewhere making it easier for the actors to perform and for Circus to flesh out the character of Gollum. As motion capture technology advanced, so too did video game technology, with video game developers constantly seeking to make their work feel more and more real. Just like in traditional animation, the game makers would often use reference footage, acting out the scene roughly and recording it so the animators had something to draw upon. But motion capture made this even easier for them and streamlined the process significantly. Early forms of motion capture in video games date back to 1988, with motion capture being used to help animate characters in the MarTech video game Vixen. 
But the most notable use of motion capture comes in more recent video games, where the technology was used to capture the performances of Norman Reedus, Max Mikkelsen, and Leah Sadu in Death Stranding, Elliot Page and Willem Dafoe in Beyond Two Souls, and as we mentioned earlier, Keanu Reeves in Cyberpunk 2077. Reference footage is still used, however, in the early pre-visualization stages and helps to provide more context for the animators and the motion capture actors, which admittedly on their own can look kinda goofy, but they are important to the video game's pipeline. Motion capture is being used more and more in video games and was prevalent in the making of games such as The Last of Us 1 and 2, Resident Evil, Spider-Man 2018, and Miles Morales, Uncharted 4, God of War, Far Cry, Mortal Kombat, and Detroit Become Human, just to name a few. Until Dawn, in particular, is a game heralded for its use of motion capture. How the team created such realistic gameplay and performances is pretty standard to a traditional motion capture shoot, capturing topographically the actor's wide range of emotional reactions and facial expressions. Every tiny movement, nuance, and subtlety gets digitized and merged, which then creates a model that can replicate the expressions and facial movement made by the actor. Once these have been recorded, the team can move on to capturing the actual physical performance of the actors themselves. To do this, predetermined sets of marker points would be drawn or placed directly onto the actor's face, as well as a high-definition helmet camera to accurately detail each movement. The camera records, in high definition, the movements of the dots throughout the performance, which will later be used to drive the expressions already captured. This means that the final product is much more accurate, as there are fewer interpretations between the captured performance and the finalized rendered performance in the game. While the actors are only capturing facial expressions in these scenes, they physically perform the scenes out themselves. In terms of the body performance, a different system is used to record the physical movement separately. For the body capture, the Until Dawn team used reflective bead suits and an infrared camera system that drives the character models. These performances capture a whole array of different tasks, such as capturing physical movements like running, stunt work, and particular scripted cutscenes. This makes for more realistic body and game mechanics and allows for a more physical presence in the game. Stunts and action scenes become more immersive as they feel much more grounded. For basically all video game motion capture shoots, physical sets cannot be used as the infrared cameras have to capture every single bead on the suit, meaning that scaffolding props are instead used to capture the scenes. With everything now cataloged, this is all then seamlessly combined together. Although, as you may have guessed, it is no easy feat and takes multiple scrupulous edits to get right. Not every video game that uses motion capture follows this process to a T, but instead uses similar variations of the process. The use of motion capture makes for a much more realistic and grounded end product, and there are arguably no video games that benefit more greatly from this process than sports games such as NBA 2K, FIFA, and Madden. That's because not only are these games trying to create realistic gameplay, such as shooting or passing systems, but they are also trying to capture photorealistic versions of the real superstar athletes that feature in the game. Real athletes are brought in and placed into motion capture suits, so the game is based on how actual professionals play in real life, making the movements more realistic and therefore more immersive. For NBA 2K, players would be placed in a suit with the markers fitted in the right place and an accurate skeleton of them would be digitally created created, before having each and every movement captured precisely. Seeing as every player has their own mannerisms, quirks, and style, this process is essential for their personality to be captured. Like games such as Until Dawn, there is a designated shot list to make sure that the animators get every movement that is required for the game. But what makes them different is that they collaborate with each player individually to make sure that what they want to see about themselves and what's important to them is replicated in the game. Take, for example, LeBron James' signature move or Steph Curry's famous mouthpiece chewing. You know, like I'm sitting there playing the game and I'm like, that's me. Like, it's actually me in the game. Like, I didn't have to create that player, like, or nothing. Like, that's like actually a person that was already in the game. This leads to a more unique experience when playing the game, as each of the superstars have their own individual traits attached. And of course, full 360 scans of the athletes are performed to capture every feature of the athlete they are digitizing, 
with 140 cameras taking pictures of the athlete in a quick and efficient process. The results are undoubtedly sensationally accurate. Of course, motion capture isn't just used for human movement, but it is also used to track the physical movements of horses, dogs, cars, and motorcycles, even if that means two members of the Death Stranding crew pushing Norman Reedus around as he rides a wooden prop. All in all, this makes the game, you guessed it, more realistic. But motion capture isn't only used for surface level realism and just to look good, but also to create a more artistic and personable experience. That's because the actors are encouraged to immerse themselves fully into the characters they are playing. Actors would often spend a lot of time preparing for the characters they would be playing, making themselves bigger and heftier for the more lumbering characters, or working out for months for characters who are more physical and action-based. By capturing the expressive nature of the performances, the actors can really embody the characters they are playing. This is apparent in the final product and helps us as the gamer relate to the characters and become emotionally invested in the narrative. Whether that be responding to Christopher Judge's performance as a tormented father in God of War, be creeped out by the unsettling nature of Lady Dimitrescu in Resident Evil 8, feel for the AI becoming more and more human throughout the course of, well, Detroit Become Human, or investing in a pseudo-father-daughter relationship in The Last of Us. No! Stop! Son of a Motion capture, without a shadow of a doubt, helped improve the quality of Last of Us, as it allowed for very real performances and for the actors to help develop the characters they were playing. Take Ashley Johnson's portrayal of Ellie, for example. Johnson's personality really started to shine through as shooting went on and the attitude and sassy personality Ellie has comes from Johnson herself. But Johnson also helped Ellie become a lot tougher and have a greater physical impact on the game. In one scene, Ellie was originally supposed to stand around as Joel saved her, but Johnson wanted to be more involved as she felt that would be something she would do in real life. So she made herself less of a damsel in distress and instead helped Joel out in the scene. This became a running theme, and Ellie became more and more self-sufficient as the game went on, due to Johnson's development of the character. But allowing the actors to get more invested in the character also allows the game to work better in a practical sense as well, as they can express themselves more clearly and therefore provide the bigger, bolder, and more realistic expressions and movements required in the game. Actors can also therefore provide their own physical quirks to play fictional characters, such as zombies or mythical beasts, providing a real physical presence in the finished product. But just like all areas of technology, motion capture is also developing and improving, and there has already been a big step forward in the craft in the last few years. One of the biggest drawbacks for a video game like Until Dawn is that other than concept art, pre-visualization, sketches, and the script itself, the actors can't see what they are interacting with. They can't see their fictitious mythical enemies, or for Until Dawn in particular, they can't feel the colds of Western Canada as they are in a studio in hot Los Angeles. This, however, is changing with the likes of the video game Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. An original jump in motion capture technology was moving to performance capture, where both the facial expressions and body movement is captured, making for less of a disconnect, which is something that Hellblade makes full use of when capturing the performance of actress Melissa Jurgens. But they even went a step further by capturing her performance in a real-time render. The combination of the facial and body motion capture technology means that the studio can create real-time cinematography for the game in a virtual world. Jurgen's performance as Senua is captured in real time and displayed to the actor on a large screen in the mocap studio, meaning that Jurgen's could see the character of Senua in the video game world she lives in and therefore engage more directly with the characters and with the world. Jurgen's could also see the enemies she was fighting and the world she was fighting for, and that made for a more believable and emotional performance, one that was crucial for a character like Senua who was undergoing such emotional turmoil. You will die here. No. And all your suffering will have been for nothing. There was a much more primal and real human presence in the character, and you can feel her acting it out in the moment. The real-time graphics for the projection came through Unreal Engine, which is designed to stream data directly from mocap into the gaming engine for real-time preview. 
This is all in essence similar to the immersive stagecraft technology used by ILM and Disney for The Mandalorian, which rendered real-time locations onto a video wall which they dubbed The Volume. However, for Hellblade, the real-time motion capture performance was only used for the cutscenes and not the game as a whole. This may sound unnecessary as you could just record the data and retarget it to the character later, but there is actually some important reasoning for this practice. Firstly, any tweaks or changes to the performance could be done there and then in the studio without the actor having to take the motion capture suit on and off. By being able to interact with the actor and the scene in real time, the game's director Tamim Antoniadis could engage with Jurgens in real time and direct her as if they were on a live action film set. They could change what didn't work about one scene and go back to elements that did work. Directors working on traditional animated projects suffer from having to work with blank facial expressions and not knowing if the voice work lines up with the physical performance, but by being able to see the result in real time, this becomes completely avoidable for games like Hellblade. What is arguably more surprising is the fact that this is actually more cost effective as it saves time and money and is therefore readily available technology to some of the smaller gaming studios, which means the lines between indie games and the big studio blockbusters are blurred. With costs lowered, this means that they can actually price the game lower than their competitors, but still provide an equal quality experience. The upcoming Hellblade sequel intends on using this technology for the entirety of their shoot, and this, therefore, could pave the way for video games to come, making them even more engaging and immersive. This form of real-time video capture is already spilling out into everyday society, such as the iPhone's Animoji service and virtual reality software, and the technology used in Hellblade could be easily used for VR and on stage and at other live interactive events. It is even theorized that one day you, as the gamer, might be able to wear the suit and play in an interactive world with your friends online. Motion capture is therefore pivotal in most video game developmental pipelines, and more and more developers are utilizing the technology to add more realism to their games. Not only does it provide an added sense of realism and bring real people and locations to life, but it also makes for a more emotional and intimate art form, one that can connect with the gamer on a real personal and primal level. It is no wonder, then, that actors are genuinely seeing video games as an amazing art form, one that could even provide a stronger form of storytelling than movies and television. It's strange to think that a practice created in 1915 would be one to shape the future of the medium, 